Okay guys, today we're gonna show you how to use this new backdrop that's available in our store. This one's called the Layered Gingerbread Cookie Backdrop. And here's an example of what it'll look like when we're all done. Today I'm gonna show you how to take your subject, cut them out of the image they are on, paste them onto this one, how to add these nice soft shadows around them, and the flower angel under them. I'll also show you how to resize and reshape it so it fits your subject just right. So we've got a lot to do today, let's get started. So when you get your Photoshop file, you'll see all of these layers um, and groups within it. This first one is where you're going to put your image, and then underneath that you have our wood grain layer, and I'll just show you what that looks like. It's just a, a picture of my table with nothing on it. It's clipped to this folder here Oops. Um, that says Snow Angels, and that has seven different angels in here for you to choose from. So every subject will have their own flower angel. So this wood grain layer is just going to apply its image to any pixels it sees in this folder. So I would not mess with the wood grain or the backdrop layer, but definitely you come in here and play with these snow angels. You can resize, reshape, uh, move them around, and it won't affect where the wood grain is. So definitely go in there and play with that. So before we get started, I do want to point out that this backdrop is shot with um, the light coming from the left side. So if you'll notice, there's a shadow right here to the right of the rolling pin. There's a shadow right here to the right of the Christmas tree cookie. So you can see that the light is coming from the left side of the image. It's hitting the left and the shadow is here on the right. So when you get an image of your subject, if you haven't shot them already, take into account where the light is coming from. You could put them next to a window. Here's what the image I'll be using, and here's a, you can see my light stand is right here on the left side of my subject. My light is coming from the left, and the shadows of my subject are right here on the right. Same as our backdrop. So that's the first step to making sure that you have a very believable composite is to light it correctly. Um, so I'm going to undo all of this. Now that I have both of my pictures open, I have my backdrop open and then a picture of my subject. I'm going to right click on that background layer of my subject, go to duplicate, and then here where it says document, I'm going to click the drop down box and select my backdrop, the layered gingerbread cookie backdrop, and then click OK. And that's going to go ahead and put it in here, one layer above what, wherever I had was selected when I left. So since I was on the backdrop, it put it right above it. So I'm going to drag it, just click on it, drag it all the way up to the very top group and put it in there. And then um, now that it's in here, you can grab the move tool. So come up here and click this very top tool. You can also click V on your keyboard, V as in Victor, and it'll select the move tool for you. And then you can just resize and rotate it to get it to wherever you want. Um, you can go here to where it says opacity and even bring this down a little bit so you can see the backdrop. You want to make sure that they are well within the flower. And then you can click the check mark up here to apply it. I'm going to bring my opacity back up to 100%. And now it's time to cut them out. Um, when, there's a million ways to skin this cat in Photoshop. I will show you two that I like. So anytime I do a mask, um, I pretty much use the pen tool. So I come over here, I click P for pen, and this is a tedious job. This is going to be the most accurate way that you'll get a selection, but it will take the longest. Um, it easily will take me 15 minutes to create a mask doing it this way. So I'll show you a really quick, you know, two second mask in a second. Um, but if you're going to print your image, I would suggest using the pen tool for your mask because any little thing that's off on it will drive you crazy. And for this, I just start right here inside the line of my subject, right inside. You don't want to get any of the backdrop in it. And I will not bore you with this. I'm not going to make you watch 15 minutes of me cutting him out, but this is what you would do. You would just use a pen tool and drag it all the way around your entire subject. When I get to the head and the hair, I just do like a big kind of circle around the top of the head and I try to include most of the hair. 
and then I'll go back in and do the rest of the mask nice and tight just right around the edge right inside the edge but anyway I'm not going to show you the whole thing once you do the whole thing though and you join the mask back together then you'll right um, yeah you'll right click you'll go to make selection and then I always add a feather radius um, even if my image is, is super shot uh, sharp and shot with a uh, flash I still find that the edges are always a little tiny, tiny bit soft. So for something like that, I would do a half of a pixel is, is usually what I'll do, um, unless my subject is actually blurry, and then you'll want to go up from that. So I'll, I'll leave it at 0.5 pixels and click OK. And then if you come up here and you select any one of these selection tools, I'll pick the first one, the regular um, rectangular marquee tool. If you click that, you'll have these icons that appear up here in this bar. And this one here says select and mask. If you click on that, it'll take you in here and then you can refine the edge around the hair. And it does a great job with hair, so don't do this part by hand. Anyway, so, and you just drag this icon, the refine edge brush tool. It's the second icon on the list. That brush, you just drag it around the hair and then click OK. Right now it says output to selection, that's fine. You could also output to layer mask, but I'll do selection for you so you could see. Just come down here to add layer mask. It's this third icon on the bottom. It's a little square with a circle in it. It says add layer mask. And there you go. Now obviously we didn't cut his entire, we just did that little section, but it does a really great job around the hair. And if for any reason you didn't like the way the mask was, you could just come down here, grab a brush, and if you're selected on the mask, black will hide and white will make it appear, make it visible. So if I wanted to get rid of his face, <laughs> I would just paint on it with black. Here, I'll hit Control z to undo. Um, but if I wanted to make something visible, I just come over here and grab white. And then I can paint back on anything that kind of came off that wasn't supposed to. So you can clean up the edges of your mask really well with just a little brush. Um, the other way, let me undo, I'll delete this layer mask. Now the quick way to do it, and I did this for many, many years, um, so it works really well, is this quick selection tool. It's up here, it's a fourth tool down. You can click W on your keyboard to get it. And for this, you'll just drag inside your subject all the way around until they are selected. Now once you let go of the tool, you have these three options up here that um, change the way it reacts next time you click on the tool. So uh, if this first one is clicked, it's just going to create a new mask every time that you click. Um, if the second one is selected with the plus, it's going to add to your current mask. And if the minus is selected, it's going to subtract from your mask. So We'll go ahead and click the plus, make sure that's selected, and get all of him in. Right in between the fingers. And then you'll do the select and mask again. So we'll click select and mask. It's, you know, it's fairly good, and the fact that he was shot on white um, does make it a little easier. So if you have a busy background, you're, you might have more of an issue. But you can just grab this refine edge brush tool that we used earlier and drag it around his hair and any part of the mask that it didn't do quite right. Hands, that's always a big one. Just a little bit in between the toes. Let's see if it'll get that. Okay. And then this time we're going to go output to layer mask and click OK. So once you have the mask the way you want it, come down here to the snow angels and select one of these, whichever one you like. And they're all a little bit different. You know, if the kid's arms are a little higher up, you might want something like this. Whoops. Um, that comes up a little higher. Let's do this one. So I'm going to select the, the snow angel. I'm going to spin it around and try to put it right on top of them. I'm going to click OK. Now you can warp this as well. So if you go up here to Edit, 
transform, go down to warp. You can drag these around so you can have it reach right up to where his hands are or if their legs are further apart or not far enough, or whatever. You can just move this, you know, to however you like it and then click OK. The next thing we're going to do is add some shadows underneath of him. So if I'm going to go down here and click New Layer. I'm going to drag this underneath of him and I'm going to grab a paintbrush. I'm going to make it a nice soft round brush. Hardness is set to zero. Click OK. And then with the bracket keys on my keyboard, I'm just going to resize that nice and big. And then I'm going to hold down Alt on my keyboard, the Alt key, and that'll change my brush tip to this eyedropper tip. You see that? And then you can sample, you can pick a color from the background. And I'm going to pick um, this like off-white color that's in the shadow of my cookie. See? And that's going to be the color I brush with. So, like we said before, the shadow should be on the right side. Maybe even just a little bit up there. And then the right side of his leg. And then I'm going to go down here, grab a layer mask. I'm going to grab a black brush from over here. So I'm just hit these arrows and switch to the black. And then I'm going to paint this right where I don't want to see the mask. So any part that came over on the left side of his leg, we'll go ahead and get rid of that. Down here under his arm. And then up here above his arm. And then I'm going to go in with a white brush and paint it right back next to his head. Now that should be good. Um, so if you go up here to the layer blend mode, right now it's selected at normal. If you click that drop down box and bring it down to multiply, it's going to add that color to the pixels behind it. So it's going to blend in really nicely. You could see the background. And then um, the last thing that you could do is you could just go ahead and add this Happy Holidays in here. If you wanted to move um, him around at this point with his angel, you can hold down, you could hit the angel layer, hold down control, and then select the folder that he's in, or even this one up here, put your image here, grab the move tool, and then you can move and resize them. Click OK. Now if your subject does look a little off as far as the color or exposure goes, now would be the time to go ahead and add um, an adjustment layer to that. So what I like to do is come up here, make sure that, that my subject is selected, and then I'll come up down here and select adjustment layers, come up here and select the levels, and then with that selected we're going to hit this little box down here with the arrow, and that's going to clip it to the layer underneath. So it's only going to apply to this layer, to the, the layer it's pointing to. So if you'll notice here, I'll just drag these all the way up. See how he's only affected and not the backdrop? If when you start moving these, everything starts to be affected, then you're not clipped. So make sure you're clipped just to him. And then drag the highlights in a little bit and maybe the shadows just a tiny, tiny bit. That looks pretty good and then just close that down. And that's it, we're all done. If you have any questions, let me know, send me some feedback. I'd love to see what you guys are creating and I'd love to hear what you think. Anyway, thanks, you guys take care, bye.